I'm Laura Ritchie. That was part of a piece called Resonance, written for me as a soloist by the composer Jill Jarman. I started to study the cello seriously the summer before I was 18, and I knew I had a long way to go, about 10,000 hours of practice. But I was full of wild ambition, and I felt nothing was impossible. I remember in one of my early cello lessons, my teacher looked straight at me, and being realistic, he said, you'll never be a soloist. I felt angry, and I fought hard not to cry. But inside, I felt determined, and I thought, Yes, I can. I can, and I did. That wasn't the first or last time I heard can't or won't. There's a lot of no in the world. No is one of the top 100 most frequently used words, where yes doesn't make an appearance until nearly 200 places down the list. I did learn and I rose above the no's. Despite his realism, my teacher saw the spark of yes in me, and he watered it like a seed. I've never stopped growing. Self-efficacy is what gives that sense of yes, you can do something. And agency is when you go and do it. I've spent my academic career researching how we cultivate and act on our yes. Understanding the psychology of self-efficacy is key to unlocking your personal agency. In the late 1970s, Albert Bandura initially defined self-efficacy as a personal belief in our capabilities to do a certain task. It gives our sense of yes, of can, of drive towards agency. It's a good thing, but all around us, society tells us what we can or can't do, bombarding us with messages that echo in our personal bubbles. And it's up to us to somehow make sense of it all and manage our beliefs. We have to ask ourselves, what do we believe? Are we tricked into giving up our agency? Has the way we view ourselves and our capabilities changed? Or do we take a view at all? I think sometimes we're taken for a ride. In life it's like being on a tourist bus or sitting in the boat on the It's a Small World ride at Disney. You know the one. Everyone loves that. Happy songs, you gently float along the river while mechanical dolls go by singing and dancing, representing lots of countries. As you sit in the boat and float through displays from around the world, you see so much. But when you leave, instead of having learned about those cultures, gained some wisdom through the experience, most people walk away with little more than a memory of a famous tune. Just because you've been on the ride, gone through the motions, doesn't mean you've learned anything. It happens in education. As a teacher, I can coach you through writing an essay or studying for a test. I can tell you just what to do to get the right sounds out of the cello. Unless you're aware of the process, you're just like a mechanical doll. Owning the process makes all the difference. After doing something, could be passing a test, baking a cake, writing a song, any task, it's easy to be swept up in the magic of, oh, wow, I did it. But that frozen, Insta moment gives us a false sense of accomplishment and we need to wake up from that 
fancy photo world where society tempts us to show we're pros, even though we've only just had a taste. Developing complex skills like learning a trade, becoming an expert, takes time. It would be like saying once you've made a cake out of a packet mix that somehow you're a chef. Whatever your goal, whether playing the cello, cooking, designing a house, making an app, becoming a civic leader, these take years to master. However, they are not only for a select few and out of reach for others. Nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. Only you can decide whether you believe in your capabilities. Only you can have self-efficacy to do things. People with self-efficacy are far more likely to be resilient, persist in what they do, and get results. Research has shown that developing expertise takes thousands of hours. And seeing the road from that first note to becoming your own soloist, understanding the progression, knowing how to navigate getting from here to there, does take years of dedication. Self-efficacy may be a long-term superpower, but it doesn't make you a quick fix superhero. And you're not going to leap the mountain of your dreams in a single bound. We start with an individual task and its processes. There are notes to learn, fingers to toughen up with calluses, muscles to train, a whole palette of skills to develop, no matter what you're doing. When we consciously think about thinking and learning processes, that's called metacognition, understanding what's required, knowing you have the skills, realizing how you feel and do, being aware and owning your self-efficacy suddenly makes things seem possible. This is the key to unlocking agency. But Modern life has been constructed for ease and people don't need to learn things. We've made huge advances to automate and simplify, creating space and time where years ago we would have had to work to figure out things. And now there are gadgets to do things for us. <laughs> Heck, I can turn on the hot water with an app. Actually, with most things in my house, I neither need to lift a finger nor know how anything works to be perfectly comfortable. The very nature of automatic means it's done for us. When things are done for us, where's our agency? It's not enough to simply have self-efficacy beliefs. It's really important to know what we're believing in, what a task involves to have accurate self-efficacy beliefs. I studied 600 school children in England who were beginning to learn musical instruments. And I asked one boy who was cheerful and confident what he was learning. And he said, the elbow. He really didn't understand, but he made sense of the situation by using the word that sounded closest to his actual instrument, the oboe. What are the component parts, the skills, the processes? How do we get from A to B? There's a big difference between an oboe and an elbow. 
Self-efficacy has to be something people own in their daily lives. Beyond a gut feeling that simply exists, it involves active reflection and strategic thinking about skills, processes, and our surroundings. Maybe you already engage with metacognitive and reflective processes without realizing it, but for many, this is not obvious. And even for those who already believe in their capabilities, becoming aware of our choices, thoughts, and actions gives us ownership instead of allowing ourselves to coast on autopilot along the path of habit. In another research study, I asked university music students to learn a new instrument, and analysis of their practice showed that without specific instruction, they reinvented the wheel on the new instrument. Starting from scratch, seeing the differences instead of the similarities. Although you may use the breath to play the flute and the bow to play the cello, many of the core skills are the same. They didn't carry their experience, knowledge, and self-efficacy with them to the new task, even though they could have. This makes me wonder if we're taught to think, believe, be self-directed, and have agency, or just to fit in as we flow through society. Without agency, without thinking, without belief, are we set up for failure? The question I ask myself is, what am I doing? What are you doing? Really? What are you doing? Are you content to just go along for the ride? Or are you the one driving in your life? That inspiring teacher of mine had a practice competition once. It wasn't about how many hours you put in, but it was about how much progress you made, how much you learned. And I was in that competition. I did put in my hours, but I also used every strategic fiber in my body to learn effectively and efficiently. Listening, watching, paying attention to details, taking care to eat, sleep, focus, reflect, and plan. And in the end, I won! That day, I was not just riding through my life, I was driving a 1981 Chevy Malibu Classic. That's right. I won a car. That was the prize. It, it was in pretty bad shape and it didn't last very long. But I was in the driver's seat. It's not such a small world. And there's a lot to explore out there and in here. We need to think and take responsibility for owning our self-efficacy and realizing our capabilities through agency. Even if you are happy to ride through life, the one thing that doesn't happen for you, that can never be automated, is your own thinking. Someone can trick you into not thinking for yourself, but nobody can take away your capacity to think and believe in yourself. Only you can believe in yourself. As we gain awareness and perception of our self-efficacy beliefs, knowing what factors in our lives affect and influence us, engaging with metacognitive thinking and consciously making decisions, we move beyond awareness to actually develop 
our self-efficacy beliefs. Awareness allows us to transfer from one setting to the next by linking processes, beliefs, and skills. The foundation of skill and the confidence of yes leads us to act. Action is our agency. A base of self-efficacy, skills, and agency, it's a recipe for change and the road to more confident accomplishments. With self-efficacy, you may well find a way to be a soloist. Maybe not textbook like Carnegie Hall or singing the halftime show at the Super Bowl, but believe me, yes, you can. And with each accomplishment, your self-efficacy is strengthened. This goes beyond thinking you can learn or grow. It's different from a mindset that persists through grit or force. People who are aware of their self-efficacy use these beliefs as an active source of motivation toward untapped possibilities. We engage with ourselves, our surroundings, and we move from belief to action, from self-efficacy to agency. We think and use strategy to take charge of our beliefs. When you own your self-efficacy, believe in your yes and know you can, then you have the keys to agency. It's your turn to be in the driver's seat. It's your turn to go solo.